Good morning. morning. And the Lord be with you. And a very warm welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship this morning. Uh, just a few announcements as we begin. You probably saw the yellow insert inside of your bulletin. Uh, that is for uh, sponsoring Easter lilies for Easter Sunday. I think they're $13 this year, and we ask that you please have your orders in by April the 10th. Uh, so that we get them here by Easter Sunday. Um, let's see. We have men's breakfast and Bible study this coming Saturday. All the men of St. Paul and visitors here as well. Um, the men are invited to breakfast at 8 a.m. over at the Cold Harbor Restaurant. Then we'll come back here to the Fellowship Hall and we'll have Bible study starting at about 9 a.m. Uh, then there's an elders meeting after church today. Is there anything else we need to share this morning? If not, as we move into worship, today is the third Sunday of Lent, and we're going to be hearing from Jesus about the fig tree that needed to be saved, if you will. Uh, it hadn't produced any fruit, and as a result of that, it ought to be cut down, but instead, rather, it was, let's go ahead and fertilize it and care for it. And if it doesn't produce fruit, then we'll talk about cutting it down. Or in Ezekiel, we'll be hearing about Ezekiel the watchman. He is to be declaring to Israel every word that the Lord gives to him. And God doesn't desire that anyone would be lost, but rather that, that the warnings would go out, calling us to repentance and faith, and that through that we might be saved. With those thoughts in mind, let's stand and sing our opening hymn. <laughs>
Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Lord, you bear us, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings in death, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy.
of whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus have you said, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil. For why will you die, the house of Israel? And you, son of man, say to your people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him when he transgresses. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall by it when he turns from his wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by his righteousness when he sins. Though I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, yet if he trusts in his righteousness and does injustice, none of his righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in his injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, Though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, yet if he turns from his sin and does what is just and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has taken by robbery, and walks in the statutes of life, not doing injustice, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the sins that he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is just and right, he shall surely live. Yet your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, when it is their own way that is not just. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is just and right, he shall live by them. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, when most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. 
nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. For Christ is your Lord. There were some present that very hour who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, 
And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then, if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. mercy and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is from Ezekiel chapter 33, our Old Testament reading today. I share with you these words. When the righteous 
turns from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is just and right, he shall live by them. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we hear all of the lessons today, one of the things that really comes through loud and clear is God speaking to us about sin and grace. Sin, on the one hand, he talks about very clearly. When we read through Ezekiel today and we hear the words that God has given to him, he says, Ezekiel, I have appointed you a watchman. And it really speaks that way about all of his prophets throughout the centuries, pastors today. Watchmen over the people that God has placed in their care. And he tells Ezekiel very clearly, every word I give to you, you tell them. Words of warning, you're in big trouble over this or that or the other thing. Do this or don't do that. You tell them what I tell you. He's not supposed to add to it, and he's not supposed to take anything away from it. What he gets from God, he tells the people. But he's also supposed to be merciful to the people. When the people realize that they have sinned, and they come and they, and they seek the grace of God, they repent of their sin and return. He's to announce the grace of God to them. To let them know that, yes, they are forgiven by God. They are restored to the kingdom. And that they're going to be fine in his care. But what I, what I like in today's text is that last line. Yet you say... The way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. Kind of puts us in our place, if you will, when we, when we take all of that into context. You see, what we like to do is to take God's word. And we twist it and we turn it to our own benefit. Pastor, you had a really good sermon today. That was what they always warned us about. I've told you this before. They always warned us about it at the seminary. Be careful of those words. Because oftentimes those words mean that you nailed that person or that person or that person. And it skipped right over me. You had a great sermon today. I could see the sin in everyone around me. But what a sermon is supposed to do is to cause each of us to stop for a moment and think about our own lives. Well, I haven't murdered anyone lately. I haven't robbed the 7-Eleven this week. I haven't gone someplace where I shouldn't be in the wrong part of town. I've been pretty good. Well, maybe those are true statements. What does God's word actually say to us? Is that the limit to what sin is? The things that I do or don't do? What about thoughts? And when Luther goes through his 20 questions, I believe it is, for preparation for communion, he has us go through and think about some of those things. Have I hated it? anyone this week? Have I gotten unduly angry with anyone this week where, where no anger should have been? Because scripture certainly talks about anger being the same as, as murdering someone else. Hatred, murder. In God's eyes, it's all the same thing. Have I been greedy this week? What are the sins that I have in my life. 
Do I feel better than other people because of the job that I have, the position that I have in society, the wealth that I have? Does it make me a better person than other people around me somehow? You see, when God talks to us about sin, he certainly does talk about those, those big issues, and there's big issues in our society today, gender issues and sexual issues and all sorts of things, abortion and end of life, and you name it. Those are big issues that are addressed in Scripture and we need to address as well. But there's other issues that we, we need not forget about. And those may apply to us in our lives, in our homes. And when God appoints Ezekiel as the watchman, that's what he's telling him to talk to them about. When you've done what is good and righteous, and you've had good and righteous thoughts, God's going to save you through that, that faith that you have in Christ. But when you have done what is sinful and unjust before God, and you don't have a repentant heart over that at all. That leaves us standing in our sin. And what we find in Ezekiel is that announcement that our God is truly a just God. You see, that's what we always struggle with as Christians. On the one hand, God is just and righteous in every way. Sin will have to be accounted for and paid for. And we're in big trouble over our sin. On the other hand, God is also merciful and kind, loving at all times and in all ways. Some people like to just look at the loving God and say, well, a loving God would never send anyone to hell. He would never make them pay for their sins because he loves us. But you see, both things are true about our God. Sin condemns. Sin has to be paid for. And what God tells us is that sin has been paid for by God himself in the person of Jesus Christ. He came into our world. He lived the life that we can't live. And he went to the cross in our place. And we can each actually say in my place. And on that cross, he paid for my sins. And he earned a gift for me, the gift of life eternal through faith in Jesus Christ. Sin is paid for. But apart from faith in Jesus Christ, and faith includes repentance, sorrow over that sin, desire that God would forgive us, and desire that we wouldn't repeat those sins, it doesn't mean we don't repeat them. It means that we don't want to repeat them. That we know we have fallen short. That we have gone the wrong direction. And what God announces to us, to the repentant sinner, is his grace. He says, on the cross, I paid for those sins. On the cross, it was taken care of. I have forgiveness for you. You're mine. But for the one who refuses to repent and to acknowledge that there is sin in their lives, God through Ezekiel says, well then I'll give you what you want. And what you're asking for is eternal condemnation. Because that's what you've earned and that's what you deserve. And you refuse the gift that I have for you in Jesus Christ, who already paid for your sins. But yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. And that's our world, isn't it? God says, 
We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all gone our own way. We've all forgotten about God. And he's called us back. And he says, repent of your sin. And I'll restore you. Because you're mine. And I want you to be with me in eternity. And what he wants us to do is indeed to repent. And to be his. Luther reminds us that we ought to have daily repentance. His morning prayer, his evening prayer, both of those ask for the forgiveness of sins. Every day. He talks about confession. He says, you know, when, you, when you're confessing your sins, confess the ones you're aware of. But also realize that there's even more sin because sin has corrupted our very being. It has turned us away from God. Scripture describes it as, you know, being headed the wrong direction at times. Other times, dead. Absolutely dead in our sins. Lost in our transgressions. And what God says is, He restores us. He calls us to repentance and we respond with a heart that says, Lord, I have sinned. He restores us. Raises, raises us up to be his own. And he says, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. So we confess the sins that we're aware of. We confess the fact that there's even more sin that we're not aware of. We seek the Lord's forgiveness. And we know he forgives us because he has promised that. I forgive you your sins. He has sent watchmen to you to announce that forgiveness to you. Just as we did at the, at the beginning of our service today. Just as you'll be receiving in the Lord's Supper as you receive that today. The forgiveness of sins, the strengthening of faith. And restoration in God's kingdom. That's what he wants for everyone. That little fig tree that we hear about in the gospel reading today. You kind of feel sorry for it, but he wants to cut it down. And the vine dresser is there and he says, just give it another year. Let me fertilize it and, and till the ground around it. And then, if it produces some fruit, very good. What have we lost if we do that? And that's what God does with us. Each hour and each day that he leaves us here, he's at work through his word and through his sacrament in our lives, calling us to repentance and forgiving and restoring us. It's a gift that he gives to us to be here, to have his word, to have his sacrament, to have his church that we gather together around that word and sacrament, that we can encourage each other in our faith and, and lead one another in the ways that God would have us to go. Because he wants us to be with him in eternity. And he has assured us that we shall be there through faith in Jesus Christ and faith in his merits alone. Lent is a season of repentance. And that's what we hear in our readings today. The call to repent and return to the Lord, to listen to his word, to acknowledge our sin, but most of all, to also understand that he is promising forgiveness and life. Because he doesn't desire that anyone should be lost. But he wants each and every one of us through faith in Jesus Christ to be saved. In his name, amen.
And we rise for prayer. In our prayers today, in addition to those that are listed in your worship folder, we want to pray for Carol Stano, wife of Pastor Les Stano. Uh, got word yesterday that she's going to be beginning uh, some cancer treatments. They're still working out exactly what that treatment is going to be. Um, but we want to certainly keep her in prayer as she goes through this uh, difficult time. We pray for Todd Sethman, son of Roger Sethman. He's had back surgery, and as a result of that back surgery, has a paralyzed right arm. Uh, we want to pray for April Sethman, daughter of Roger Sethman. Uh, she's had kidney cancer and has now lost her second kidney. She's awaiting a donor uh, and is receiving dialysis. We want to pray for Ryan and Kate Lowry. Ryan's the son of Judy Lowry. Um, they have some personal issues. We pray for Suzanne Zaremba, friend of Bill and Judith Poole. She's having surgery tomorrow. And we have a prayer of thanksgiving uh, from Barbara Gasco, the Randolph-Macon Division III basketball champions this year are, is Randolph-Macon. Uh, so we, we give thanks for that. We pray. Restore us, O Lord, according to your promise, and hear the prayers of your people who cry to you in need. <coughs> Blessed Lord, it is your good and gracious will not to condemn, but to save the sinner through the merits of Christ alone. Open our hearts to the voice of your call. Lead us to repentance, and grant us your Holy Spirit so that we may show forth the good fruits of, of that repentance in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we live in a world filled with temptation, fear, and threat. Grant us a refuge in your word, that our hearts may not despair. Deliver us from all our enemies and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Lord, the tragedies and disasters of this life unsettle our hearts and feed our anxieties. Remind us of your great compassion and faithfulness, and support the victims of such events, as well as the emergency personnel who imperil themselves on our behalf. Lord, we especially remember the people of the Ukraine as they continue in, in the evil war that is going on. Lord, we pray that you would be with them, keep them safe, and, and change the hearts of Russia, that they would return from their military uh, battles, to their homeland. Lord, we also pray that you would be with all of our emergency personnel, those who serve to guard and protect us both in the military and police. Lord, we pray that you would be with Troy Chapman, Brad DeVore, Brandon Ferry, Andrew Gale, Jordan Lester, Kyle Luter, Garrett Morris, Meredith Morris, and Mike Sanford. Keep them safe and return them home once again. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, our world cries out in search of hope. Grant to those who preach your word the, the grace to proclaim it faithfully and bless those who serve you in distant lands, especially Reverend Matt Wood and Reverend Gustavo Maita. Help them share the light of your gospel with those who sit in the darkness of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Deliver, O Lord, the sick from their afflictions, the sorrowing from their grief the troubled in mind and from depression, and the dying from fear. Hear us as we especially pray for Diane Birch, Kevin Farkas, Ed Clem, Steve Marcus, Ryan and Kate Lowry, Elaine Nelson, Michelle Scott, Carol Stano, Todd Sethman, April Sethman, and Suzanne Zaremba. For Liz Bassett, Maybelle Bloker, John and Margaret Dawson, Tommy Earl, Lonnie Ellis, Paul Farkas, Bella Francesca, Faye Garza, Eleanor and Butch Gilmain, Bill Herndon and Patrick Herndon, Stuart Jackson, Gary Yeager, Dick Johnston, Michael Leary, Janet Lowman, Todd Lowry, Carolyn Lusenhop, Buddy and Cindy Marshall, Cindy Messina, Thelma Miller, Tommy Robertson, and Jack Rudisill. 
Robin Rubisil, Elsie Sauer, Mark Sauer, Connie Scott, Pam Sheldon, Amy Sibbles, Lori Snyder, Lucille Stillwell, Dick Still, Paul Tharp, Wendy Tinsley, Billy Walton, Rob Weston, Christy Wright, and Bill Zanakis. And for all who cry to you in need, hear us for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior, Lord in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the health care workers that you provide to, to help us in our daily lives. We pray that you would be with them as they carry out their work. Be especially with Ashley Borsey, Tammy Byers, Deborah Dominic, Crystal Garrett, Amy Hughes, Samantha Miller, and Tia Whitmer. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the many gifts that you give to us to rejoice in. Lord, today we rejoice along with the people of Randolph-Macon as they celebrate the victory in Division Three basketball. Lord, we thank you for the simple gifts of this life, the blessings that you bestow, and we know that it all comes from you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Lord, all things are yours, and yet you, know, you show your great mercy in giving us all we need for this life and for eternal life. Give us also a grateful heart so that we may respond with gratitude and return to you the tithes and offerings you are due for all your kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Shown to us 
when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
take and drink. The true wine, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. The true wine, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you. Take and drink. This is the true wine, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of May this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into life everlasting. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Savior Jesus Christ, give it for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, give it for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, give it for you.
body and blood strength and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into life everlasting. Heart in peace. Serve the Lord.
Please rise. through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Sir.